Howdy there, folks. Jeremy from the Seeds of Liberty podcast here again with another installment of Abolitionist Abstractions. So, here today in the great old USSA, it is Independence Day, a day supposedly meant to celebrate the colonists declaring independence from that mean old King George way back in 1776. Um, Many Americans will spend this day having barbecues, setting off fireworks, waving their enslavement shrouds proudly, and uh, talking about freedom. There are so many problems with that very notion I don't even know where to begin. For starters, this day, July 4th, which has been set aside for Independence Day, isn't even the correct day. The Continental Congress of the time declared, well, voted for the declaration to be signed Um, on July 2nd of 1776 and only 12 of the 13 colonies voted on that day. Um, My colony, (laughs) the People's Republic of New York, waited until July 9th to vote on the declaration because, according to the records, Uh, the delegates had not been authorized to vote on July 2nd, so they had to wait till the 9th. The actual signing of the Declaration, which so many Americans erroneously believe happened altogether on July 4th, didn't start occurring until, I believe, August 2nd of 1776. Um, And most of the alleged delegates signed on that day A few others signed in the coming weeks, or sorry, the following weeks, and two of the alleged delegates never even signed the declaration at all. So that's the start. The second problem is that so many people believe they are celebrating freedom on this day and celebrating the independence from the king but they don't really understand what that means. In order to achieve the independence that the colonists believed they were after, it was necessary to secede from the king's rule. Yes, that dirty word, secession, that is what they did. And that deserves to be uh, championed, the idea of secession. When you are being ruled over by an oppressive entity, a government, a king, uh, anybody, then you as a sovereign individual, a free individual, someone who understands, recognizes, and accepts self-ownership should have every right to secede from that power. Um, Because if you do not desire or need to be ruled or rule over others, then you should be free to do as you choose. Um, But secession became a dirty word during the not-so-civil war when one of the original American tyrants, good old not-so-honest Abe, uh, basically outlawed it by declaring that the Confederate States did not have a right to secede from the Union. Now, this, of course, contradicts much of the actual history because, again, the country was founded on secession Um, Many of the colonies, uh, Virginia being the biggest one at the time, 
um, when the idea of the Constitution came around and it was, you know, talked about, discussed, and eventually ratified, um, people in Virginia um, and in other places, but Virginia was the was the main point for this. They believed that they were signing on to a compact that they would have every right to leave if they believed that the new government was oppressing them in any way even close to what the king had been doing. And, you know, the many of the people that eventually capitulated and agreed to ratify or allow the Constitution to be ratified did so under the understanding that, well, if things go to hell, we can just walk away because that's what we fought for, right? The war was fought for independence. It was fought to secede from the king. So if we, the collective we, could secede from the king's power, then there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to secede from this new power if we believe that it is oppressing us. So if it wasn't for that idea, if it wasn't for that belief, the Constitution probably wouldn't have ever been ratified the way it was written. Because, again, Many of these people believe they were signing onto a compact which could be ended by either party um, if there was violation of the terms, just like any contract. You enter a contract with somebody, you agree to the terms. If one side violates the terms of the contract, contract's null and void. No longer matters because one side has not held up their end of the bargain. So the other side... There's no reason for them to be held to it. But the uh, great old tyrant himself, Mr. Lincoln, uh, demonized the idea of secession. And since then, the history books have been written to make him right on this matter. That secession, no, 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 you can't break up the Union. That's horrible. And even if you discuss these things, you are to be labeled uh, a traitor, uh, treasonous, a neo-Confederate. Even if you're not even speaking of the Confederacy, you're just speaking about the general idea of secession, uh, the propaganda and rhetoric that has been force-fed to most of us throughout our schooling years leads people to believe that they're all tied together. Now this, of course, also ignores the fact that people that had a hand in writing the Declaration, the Constitution, uh, those hallowed framers and founders, uh, people like Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, uh, <clears throat> both wrote extensively on the ideas of nullification and secession without actually using the words um, and spoke of how this was a righteous path. You know, when you, you know, if you read the words of the Declaration and, you know, the long train of abuses by the king that the colonists were allegedly rebelling against, and then you go back and you plug in the U.S. government for any of the areas where the king is mentioned, you can easily see that the long train of abuses by the king looks like the actions of a schoolyard bully next to what the U.S. government has done, which is to say... What the king was doing was a minor nuisance in comparison to what has happened since. Now, there are a lot of Americans who believe that, yes, the government has gotten out of control and that if we could just get back 
to the ideas of the Constitution and, and that time frame that everything would be a-okay. But this is not a new phenomenon. The new long train of abuses began shortly after the ink dried on the Constitution. You have things like the Whiskey Rebellion, the Alien and Sedition Acts. These things took place less than 12 years after the ratification. And they were just a glimpse of what was to come from the power of the almighty U.S. federal government. So the long train of abuses started way back then, and yet millions and millions of people in this country still cheer on Independence Day. We're free from the king, and this is a great thing to celebrate. Well, we might have, we, again, we, might have been freed from the king's rule, but it was quickly replaced by someone else's rule, the new ruling class. Because it is no longer the divine right of kings, it is the divine right of politicians. Um, as I've discussed before, and we've also discussed on the Seeds of Liberty, the Constitution created and codified a ruling class, which is very evident in Article 1, Section 8, where Congress shall have the power. Who gave them that power? On what authority? So, <clears throat> all that was really accomplished by the Declaration was convincing a bunch of people that you could be freer under a new master than you were under the old one. And all you have to do is look around to find out that, well, things did not work out as planned. Because it only took a few short years for the new ruler, or rulers, to start imposing their will on everyone else rewriting the history books and convincing generation upon generation that this was all done in the name of good. And secession is now demonized and you will catch, if you're lucky, just nasty stares if you utter the word in polite conversation because people automatically hear secession think of the not-so-civil war, automatically tie it to racism and slavery, um, and never bother to look further into that, and don't bother to recognize the hypocrisy of denouncing secession when, once again, that's how their beloved country was formed. So, what I would like everyone out there to actually do on this so-called Independence Day is learn some history. And no, no, I don't mean go brush up on the stuff that you were taught in school because, unfortunately, that's not real history. It is whitewashed at best, outright lies at worst. The people who fought for their independence way back in the 1770s and 1780s, they believed that they were fighting for freedom because that's what they were told. And had I been alive at the time, I probably would have believed the same damn thing. And I would have happily fought for my freedom. Today, I am still happily fighting for my freedom because I know that to be right. I know that to be moral. I know that to be just. So on Independence Day, instead of waving your little flags, reciting 
the declaration, having your barbecues and setting off your fireworks, perhaps it is time to pick up a book. Perhaps it is time to relearn some history. Perhaps it is time to understand what secession really means. Because if it was good enough for those colonists and those framers that are venerated by the American population, if it was good and righteous for them to secede from the king's power, then it stands to reason that it is every bit as good and righteous to secede from the bloody union. If it is good and righteous to secede from the bloody union, then it is good and righteous to secede from your state. If it is good and righteous to secede from your state, then it is also good and righteous to secede from your county. And if it is good and righteous to secede from your county, then it is also good and righteous to secede from your town. And if it is good and righteous to secede from your town, then it must also be good and righteous to secede from your neighborhood. In fact, secession, all the way down to the individual level, must be good and righteous if it was good and righteous for the colonists to secede from the king's rule. You know, Murray Rothbard talked about this, and he, I believe, sort of decried the not-so-civil war, not because of the racism aspect, not because of the slavery aspect, um, but because the South, in trying to secede from the Union, um, was really just trying to keep their freedom. Now, obviously, I don't agree with all of the freedoms that some of them wanted, and yes, some, because contrary to popular belief, not all that many people owned slaves in the South. I think it was only about four or five percent of the population actually owned slaves, and not nearly all of the people involved were supporting slavery. They just wished to be left to their own devices and not be ruled over by some distant government. Sounds familiar, right? But Rothbard decried what happened because if secession had been upheld and the South had been allowed to walk away from the Union, then it would have set the precedent for all secession all the way down to the individual level. Now, I agree with that for the most part, although I would posit that the secession of the colonies from the king is all the precedent we need. Because if the millions and millions of Americans can look at that action as good and righteous, then as I laid out before, there's no reason why individual secession should not be just as good and righteous. I have no desire or need to be ruled over or to rule over others. I really wish more people would start thinking that way and stop believing in fairy tales and stop believing that they are free just because some papers, some history professors, and some politicians constantly tell them they are. Because if you are not free to secede from the ruling class, and by secede, I don't just mean pick up and move somewhere else. No, no, I'm not going to go move to Somalia or anywhere else because, unfortunately, 
there's warlords in Somalia. And guess what? You know what they like to do? Rule over people. So people who like to throw that out at anarchists and voluntarists and anybody else who believes in a stateless society that, well, why don't you just go somewhere else if you don't like it here? There's no place else for us to go. There's ruling classes everywhere. Why not try to make it better instead of telling the people who are peaceful and want to espouse the ideas of real freedom to just go away? Why not try experiencing freedom for yourself? Secede from the state. Not just your state, the state in general. The all overpowering, omnipotent state. Just secede. Opt out in as many ways as you possibly can. Because if you continue to play their game, if you continue to believe that you are free just because you might be a little more free than somewhere else, then you will never understand freedom. And please, stop using these holy days to make yourself look foolish. And yes, in my mind, this is a holy day because it's celebrating the religion of U.S.S.A. State statism. Don't believe me? Hey, take a look at one of my last videos on Enslavement Shroud Appreciation Day. The whole idea of people getting mad when somebody desecrates their flag should clue you in because desecration is an act of some kind of violence or destruction against a holy or sacred object. If you think the symbols of America are holy and sacred and you still don't find that to be a religious thing, you may want to learn what those words actually mean. So, secession should be present in anybody's mind who wants to spout off about Independence Day because that is what it was about that is what was championed at the time and as I said earlier that should be celebrated because that's what freedom is about living your life as you see fit as long as you bring no harm or do not initiate aggression against another and secession, even individual secession, is not harming anybody. Just means you would prefer to be left alone. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that you want to live all by yourself and not interact with anyone, because those are not the same things. It is perfectly reasonable for a group of individuals to secede from some power and then still congregate and participate in voluntary interactions peacefully, trading with each other, uh, making money for themselves, improving their lives, helping one another. The only thing missing is the coercive force of government. So, again, on this secession day, as I, I, I hope it could one day be renamed, um, because heck, if we're gonna champion the ideas, we should at least get the right ideas out there. On this secession day, try to remember what it is that the colonists were seeking independence from. And then look at where that has gotten us. Maybe it's time for you to secede. I know it's time for me to do so, and I have already taken steps to make that happen. And I will continue to do so through this show, 
through the Seeds of Liberty, through any other activism I can engage in, just spreading the word that secession is not an evil thing. It is, by far, one of the most powerful tools in the arsenal of those that seek real freedom, those that refuse to be ruled. Thank you guys for watching. I think that's all I got for today. I will just mention that the Just Like the Seeds of Liberty podcast, Abolitionist Abstractions, is covered by the BIPCOT no-gov license. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about that at BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Peace.